Hello everyone and welcome to QE. The UK is officially metric in line with the rest of Europe. Although the UK still uses both metric and imperial measuring which can get confusing, whereas the US only uses imperial. So when you see measurements in cups instead of fluid ounces for example, we worry that our measuring will be wrong, when in fact they are the same. Other than that, why do we use both? Because imperial is customary, it's what people grow up with, and because it's what their parents use, and what their parents' parents used. They're convenient. In school now, we are taught metric, and metric is more practical for most purposes. So there's a mix, imperial at home for a few things, metric everywhere else. So if you are using a recipe written in cups and ounces, always verify the source of your recipe to determine if it has been written using the US or the imperial system of measurement. The difference in volume measurements can be quite noticeable when producing large quantities and as a rule of thumb, whilst the imperial gallon, quart and pint are about 20% larger than the US fluid measurements, the metric fluid ounce is about 4% smaller. A cup is imperial whereas in fluid ounce is metric. So let us start at the bottom of the table with teaspoons. A teaspoon in the UK is 5 milliliters. You can use teaspoons to get the exact amount needed. One teaspoon is equivalent to one-sixth of a fluid ounce, or 4.7 milliliters. It takes three level teaspoons to make a tablespoon. The most simple conversion is tablespoons to teaspoons. If you are missing a tablespoon, simply measure out three level teaspoons instead. A tablespoon in the UK is 15 milliliters and is equivalent to a soup spoon. Or there are approximately one and a half dessert spoons per tablespoon. One dessert spoon holds 10 milliliters and one tablespoon holds 15 milliliters. Work out how many tablespoons you will need. An easy way to do this is to remember that one cup equates to 16 tablespoons. For example, if you need half a cup, you would require 8 tablespoons of fluid. Measure your liquid over a vessel and pour slowly and steadily. To avoid excess spillage into the vessel and fill your tablespoon with the liquid, transfer to the vessel and repeat until you have measured the amount you need in tablespoons. Now, let's progress on to cups. A cup in the UK is around 250 milliliters, the same size as a teacup, which is also what is called a classic or standard cup. You probably have a few of those in your kitchen cupboard. A typical UK mug holds approximately 350 milliliters, 12.5 imperial fluid ounces, of liquid. Tip. If a recipe is all in cups, example, two cups of flour, half a cup of sugar and a cup of milk, you can use any standard cup size. Any recipes with parts or various amounts of the same quantity. You can use one container to measure all your ingredients. You risk only a larger or small end result. If you are using an old recipe, keep in mind that it may be using an imperial cup as its reference. Imperial cups are larger than the standard US cups, equating to 9.6 ounces. This means you would measure out 19 tablespoons rather than 16. The standard cup for the UK is 250 milliliters, 8.4 fluid ounces. Other common types of glassware include pint glasses. Standard sizes for beers are 500 milliliters and 330 milliliters. Pubs and bars in the UK are used to serving beer in pints or half pints. And alcoholic drink, especially distilled spirits are served in shot glasses, which measure at 25 milliliters. All of these are useful for measuring. But if you find yourself in a situation without a measuring cup, there are other simple ways to determine the amount of liquid that you will need. It can be useful to have some visual aids in your head as a reference for the correct amount. Here are some good ones to remember. A teaspoon is about the size of the tip of your finger. As a general rule, the tip of your finger should measure about one teaspoon. Hold your finger next to whatever you are measuring to portion out a similar amount. 
Use the tip of your thumb as a guide for measuring a tablespoon. While the tip of your thumb should equal about a tablespoon. Adjust the amount slightly if your thumb is larger or smaller than average. Also a tablespoon is about the size of an ice cube. Each cube is equal to just about a tablespoon. If you want to freeze smaller amounts, just measure it out before you fill the tray. One fourth cup is about the size of a large egg. These approximations are based on a large, two ounces, egg. Other egg sizes may be more or less than the amounts. With whole eggs, three whole eggs equals a half cup. A half cup is about the size of a tennis ball. A half cup of ice cream, fruit or vegetable, equals the size of a tennis ball. So one medium piece of fruit equals the same size. A full cup is about the size of a baseball, an apple or a fist. So a cup of cooked greens or a cup of yogurt should all look like the size of a baseball. Place your vessel on a flat surface and bring yourself down to eye level. This will help you to see the amount being poured. Pour the fluid slowly into your vessel. When you think you may have the right amount, stop and compare it to the size of your visual aid. Make adjustments to the amount in the vessel if necessary. If using kitchen scales, it is worth remembering that one fluid ounce of water corresponds to exactly one ounce in water. This principle also applies to liters, 1 milliliters of water is 1 gram in weight. Use this as your key metric when measuring your liquid. For example, if you need half a cup of water, it should weigh 4 ounces or 125 grains. Okay, so our question is how many ounces in a cup? And the answer is, there are, 8 fluid ounces 250 milliliters. In a mug there is 12 fluid ounces 350 milliliters. Which equals 11.83 ounces in weight. I hope you found today's video as much fun as I did. If you have any questions, comment below to let me know. And I do my best to answer them. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to give us a like. New here, why not subscribe? And don't forget to turn on the notification bell, so you never miss a future video. And I'll see you in the next one.